Hello everybody. Uh, I am Barbara Clark and I wanted you to know that Cindy Utter invited me this year to be one of her explorations of me people. And this is my first video so I thought you'd get to see me in all my glory. And the book I decided that I'm going to use is right up here on my shelf. I'm going to use this book that um, I have been using for about six years. I made this journal cover and it is a place in which I have spilled. When Cindy says explorations of me, I thought about this immediately. I have spilled myself into this book. It's not for anyone else to read. It's for me to read. And so what I'm going to be doing is finding the things in here that I especially don't want anyone to see. And I'm going to start by just sewing over pages. And then I'm going to create art. So that's where we're starting. And today is the beginning. It's January 2nd. See you soon. So this is absolutely the last time that I paint with my book in this cover because I got black paint all over it and um, I've washed it out. Duh. Anyhow, that looks like some goobers too up there. Maybe that's just wet. Um, so the cover is going to go off while I've got the acrylic paints out. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. I also keep other special little goodies in this when we talk about explorations of me, pathways on my journey. One of them has been to be a member of Al-Anon for many, many years, and I love that little Just for Today bookmark. And uh, so I keep it. 
and then I used to use a nice calendar called the Mastermind Calendar. My sister got me into it. And these are the eight steps into the mastermind consciousness. And, and they, like 12-step programs, were really useful for me in my explorations of myself. This was back in the 90s, 80s and 90s. The other little piece I have in it is the really the place where my soul kind of opened up and freed itself of a whole lot of clutter. And that's the principles of attitudinal healing from the Center for Attitudinal Healing in uh, Tiburon, Gerald Jampolsky's group. So when my brother was diagnosed with AIDS, then I started attending the attitudinal healing groups and got through that that way and found that I liked it as a support system better than the 12-step programs. It in itself is a 12-step program, but for attitudinal healing rather than for recovery. Anyway, treasures in my little book. So, now we are ready for some more paint. And because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera off for the moment. Alright, so I'm just putting down some paint. Putting down some paint. Covering over the black. I could have done white, couldn't I? Here's a quote that I'm going to use on this page. On the next page it says, Your memory is a monster. You forget it doesn't. It simply files things away. It keeps things for you or hides things from you. Your memory summons a thing to your recall with a will of its own. You imagine you have a memory, but your memory has you. That's from John Irving. Uh, John Irving's book, In One Person. Your memory has you. And so what I'm going to do is... Oh, look at that. Oh, dear. Now I'm going to turn off the camera because it is showing the paint through here. All right, so I've gotten some other layers on here, and I did some scribbling with one of my little scribble thingies. And um, now I'm going to I carve this stamp and carve December. And so now I'm going to put some circles on here using my jelly plate. A stamp pad. I'm using that too. Trying to keep my sleeve out of the oh, getting it all over me, getting it all over me. It works better on dark. All is well. Okay. That's what I'm going to do with that. 
I'm going to do some more surface things and then I have some things here to glue on and then I have to do something with this jelly plate. So I will be back. Okay, so I'm going back to this quote that I started with from this writing from 2013. Your memory is a monster. You forget it doesn't. It simply files things away. It keeps things for you or hides things from you. Your memory summons things to your recall with a will of its own. And I actually find that to be quite provocative, I thought. But I like my memory. So I'm going to put my stamp on this page. This is my selfie stamp that I made. That's me. And I am going to take in Cindy's challenge, which is to say five things positive about myself. I'm going to say that what is positive about me is that anything where memories are monsters for me, I tend to use that as, um, I, I use that as good stuff. I use it as stuff to transform. I'm going to glue these in while I'm thinking out loud here. So, memory. Memories trigger things. Triggers bright shadow. Triggers dark shadow. Um, and I treasure my memories. I value them highly. And I use them. What just dropped was that my blue stick? Right there. Don't want glue on the floor. So, um, what I'm, what I do in explorations is me. I, I've been a journaler long, lot longer since the early '80s, since the late '70s actually. I was teaching people how to keep personal journals and stuff like that at the community college level, and. Uh, And so when I think of my memories, I think of things like this little image. The child part of me, the adult part of me, the older part of me, and all of these parts of me coming together now. And while the part of me that I'm covering up in this book is something I don't care to ever read about again, it doesn't mean that I'm not proud of myself for having written it. And it was tremendously valuable for me to write it. So I have the word memory here. I think I'll enhance that with some black pen. Got the Pigma Graphic One here. It's going to I think memories are gifts, and yes, they can be monsters, and I choose to let them bring me love and not pain, and I choose to call this page I choose to call this page finished. So thank you for hanging out with me for a little while. 
and um, I'll see you next month.